This is Cosmo Royale, telling you to get ready for Gazbot and the Big Dog Defender. Action, activate! and welcome. I am Gazbot. This is Action Activate. And if I'm here and that's what we're doing, then with me as always, of course, is Big Dog Defender. But I am not alone today, y'all. Ranger Nation, we have with us the <laughs> one, the only Campbell Cooley. I'm always mirrored. <laughs> I always do the wrong pointing. There we go. Welcome, <laughs> sir. Right I feel like the meat in the awesome sandwich. There we oh. go. Wow, we, we got promoted to awesome. We were mediocre last week, so that said something. <laughs> Three out of five sandwich is I'm what I'm you, usually I'm known as. A little of this, and um, I'm going to give you a one shot there, Cam. Now, most we we've, we've had you on before, and most people know who you are. But for those people living under a rock, who are you? Why are you here, buddy? Well, for some indescribable reason, uh, I started doing voice work for Power Rangers back in 2005. And it just kind of went from strength to strength. You know, I was doing little <clears throat> one-off monsters and then doing uh, bigger monsters and then ongoing monsters and then the occasional good guy. And next thing you know, it's like I was doing like all these villains. And I was like, wow, this is, this is really kind of cool. And then I discovered there was this whole like, you know, fan universe out there that loved this sort of thing. And I, and I thought, well, I should probably connect to them and say hi. And we're happy you did. Uh, I, you and I first got in touch through Twitter, which is funny because I don't really use Twitter very much. So it was, it was lucky we even connected that way. Um, but you, uh, I'll just jump right in real quick. The first role that you did on Power Rangers, which we talked about before, was Tomars on SPD, correct? Yes. Um, and it's funny because I learned that but a year ago when we had our first interview, you know, I was doing my research because I hadn't watched SPD. Then we just watched SPD. And it was this weird thing of like, Oh, here's Tomar. Hey, that's Campbell Cooley. <laughs> like, you know, like, which I wouldn't have had that reaction previous to us talking. Yeah, but when he right. came on it, it was like, oh, oh, I know that guy. <laughs> I know that voice. <laughs> <laughs> um, Big Dog, do you yes. want to start us off with an official question, sir? Yes. So obviously through the uh, intro, we found out that you were Cosmo Royale on Ninja Steel. We know you as Scrozzle for the first season that we reviewed on our show. But speaking of Beast Morphers, what was one of your favorite monsters to voice other than Scrozzle? Oh, wow. Um, that's, that's tough because, I mean, it depends on the – it's kind of hard to explain. Like, in terms of just sheer enjoyment of doing the character. Yes. And that would be, that would be Cosmo. Mm. Um, just because he was fun and he was, you know, lighthearted and everything. But in terms of, like, favorite sounding character, I really like Snide. I really yeah. enjoy how it sounds. And um, in, in terms of like the easiest job enjoyment, like in terms of the easiest job I've ever done, that would be the Mecha voice from Dino Charge. Right. Gotcha. It's okay. So I loved it. It was just, it was just so non invasive. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Nice. I, thank you for the comprehensive list. I know a lot of our viewers may not just realize how many voices you've done so getting kind of a breakdown at, through the uh, sure. errors if you will is much yeah, appreciated yeah. so thank you um no problem. I, well let me go back then because i realized i i set a big dog to, t to ask a question but i had a follow-up already we're already falling apart here <laughs> crumbling <laughs> so, at the seams of four crumbling minutes at the seams so <laughs> i was because i was asking about tomars i brought him up because we did just like i said we did just watch uh, spd and so that came up but i did have a specific question about him um because we talked about him here actually let me throw this up here we talked that's tomars he's a little bit smaller oops that's not tomars um okay i'm a mess here what am i doing there we go tomars <laughs> he he's this guy <laughs> uh tomars when we talked last time you talked about 
uh, with the grin and stuff, how you kind of based his voice on another character uh, right. somewhat, um, the Cheshire Cat, if I remember correctly, yes? Yes. Um, and I was wondering, did you, do you often base characters on other, you know, um, people or things or get inspiration that way? And if so, right. do you have any examples you maybe want to give with us? Sure, sure. Um, <clears throat> nine times out of 10, once I kind of see what the character looks like, and maybe I have like a little bio on them, and it, usually it's not very much, it's like what their power is or what their beef with the Rangers is. Um, once I see the character, nine times out of 10, a voice will come to me. Mm. If I'm struggling and I can't come up, <laughs> there <he is. laughs> if I'm struggling and I need some inspiration, I try and look into the, you know, I try to see something about the character that maybe stands out. And like with, Tomars, he had this kind of big grin, which is kind of like the Cheshire Cat. So I did my best approximation of a Cheshire Cat voice. And then um, in rare, rare circumstances, which we can go into later, um, I just, nothing comes to me. Mm -hmm. You know, I just, I just can't come up with anything. Uh, but building on what I just said earlier, um, the only other incident where I can think of where, uh, well, that's not true. Sorry, two instances. Um, one instance was uh, Barracuda in. Um, oh, gosh, what was it? Was, was that it? Ninja Steel? No, 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 no. Oh. I, I want to say it was. Oh, that's uh, Ripcon. That's uh, Ripcon. Overdrive. I, I might be wrong, but uh, there was something. Well, big Dog, you would know. Was yeah. he from Overdrive? Or... <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> I, I haven't watched that's odd. Operation I... Overdrive. It's my favorite season. I'm a terrible person. Um, <laughs> I, I don't remember. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so, so um, um, yeah. So with with uh, Barracuda, and I think it was Operation Overdrive, mm -hmm. um, where he had this Western theme. He was kind of a cowboy. Had a, had a cowboy hat and the thing with the the bullets and everything. Randally. So I kind of was inspired by like, you know, the good, the bad, and the ugly. So mm. I tried to do something kind of in a Clint Eastwood vein. So he kind of had a kind of an old timey gunslinger um, accent and I must have done something wrong because it got me the part. And then <laughs> uh, getting more towards, you know, uh, modern day. Modern day. Modern uh, day. <laughs> <laughs> Recently, that's what I'm trying to say. Yes. Um, so when uh, as many people, there's probably a few people out there that know that when I was trying to come up with the voice for Scrozzle, I just hit a brick wall. Mm. I could not come up with anything. And so in my attempts to come up with some um, um, inspiration, I, I knew that he was like a genius. He was a scientific genius. And he was kind of a, a conniving schemer. Uh, maybe what we got from the first episode, he was a little bit of a bully, but like when push comes to shove, he would kind of back down. And right. that reminded me so much of Dr. Smith from the original Lost in Space series in the 1960s. Right. So I thought, hmm, I want to do some, maybe, maybe do something in, in that vein. And, you know, I, this is my memory. I could be way off base here, but I my memory was that he kind of had this he kind of had this faux English accent, and it was all very dramatic and everything. And every time I tried to do something in that ilk, he just sounded like Cosmo, and right. I was like, it's "Not going to work." <clears throat> so, my my initial inspiration for um, uh, Scrozzle was Doctor Smith from Lost in Space, but it it didn't pan out. And for those uh, listening who don't know the story, it was the morning of the audition and it was like, it was a half hour before I went into audition and I was just like, I was panicking. <laughs> <laughs> like I had nothing for this character. And I was, I was looking at myself in the bathroom mirror going like, I got nothing. What am I gonna do? I'm gonna look like a complete idiot if I go in there and I have nothing to give. So, so I just started like pushing my voice and, and it just, uh, nothing was coming out. And then eventually, boom. The voice that you hear in the show, that's what came out. And I was like. Oh, and it no. works. <laughs> it works so good. It's And it's funny because it seems like, not that it's effortless, but it seems like, oh, well, this is the voice he decided and he worked on. And this is, that makes perfect sense that this is what he, but you're just sort of like, Bleh! and it just worked out. It totally worked out. And I was, I was not sold on it. 
But I went in there and like my, at that stage, it was just, I wanted to not look silly going into the booth and not having anything to offer. So I, I went in and I, and I offered that. And, you know, looking back on it in hindsight, um, I think I understand now why they went with the voice. Uh, and it's just, nobody has said anything to me. It's just my own, my own personal interpretation, but there's, there's something kind of childlike about him. Mm. And, Mischievous and, more than evil, maybe. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so I can see that. Kids, like you know, mom and dad aren't looking. I'm going to get a cookie. You know, it's, it's a, <laughs> but the cookie is some kind of bomb. Exactly. exactly. Something nefarious. Yeah. So I think that that's you know I I totally understand why they went with the voice and yes it took a while but eventually the voice it it did grow on me and I yeah I, he's he's one of my favorite characters well, and that's that's the perspective you're coming at it from like not seeing it and working on it I think most people that watch the show it wasn't like oh it grew on me it was like okay yeah this makes perfect sense that that's yep, who this guy is exactly. and it worked from minute one because yeah it was. It, we saw it all put together, whereas you were seeing the pieces. So, like, but yeah, I, mm. yeah, it, I never had a doubt. Like, what it was so this seamless. Guy? Yeah, yeah. I said it was so seamless. It was one of those yeah. things. Once he was on screen, and you just heard like the actions and the voice just lined up so much. I was like, yeah. I know exactly you what were, this guy's about. All yeah, right. it informed a lot about the personality. And you were talking about the suit actor whose name I don't remember now. Koji. Koji. Yeah, and yeah, it it works perfectly together and everything. And and the the yeah, it all works. Um, we have a lot of people in chat. So hello to everyone we that's saying hello. Yes, hi. Um, uh, yeah, it was like, we, it was all of a sudden a damn burst. So I don't want to ignore <laughs> Among other, we have a lot of our, our regular viewers. We have some new viewers. So hello to everybody. But we also have a special viewer, uh, the real Babu, who is literally the suit oh, actor for Babu is, is joining us. So that's extra fun. We got monsters on one side of the camera. We got monsters in the chat. <laughs> we got, we got to get all of our bases covered. One thing that I know yeah. a couple of chat members were putting in multiple times. So I wanted to make a note. Um, the monster that we were talking about, Barracuser, was from Jungle Fury. Yes. Jungle Fury, yes. yes. I, All good. I also crazy. was wrong because I was blinded by rage. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh yeah, everybody's saying Jungle. They're all telling us it's Jungle Fury. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for correcting me. I just, I was like, I, I just, it's not Operation Overdrive, but I know it's not Mystic Force, and I just thought uh, somewhere in between there anyway it's one of those things honestly it's kind of a rite of passage here if something doesn't get confused or misremembered you oh, yeah. can't be on the show it's yeah, kind of it's like true. the bar that you need to stumble upon in order to make it on action activate so that's absolutely true everybody's I'm, good now we're all here yeah. <laughs> but speaking of real, real babu is saying childlike monster never thought of that before because he has in the past <laughs> talked about how he feels that babu had a similar sort of although i would say babu is even younger but yeah similar oh, yeah I would say not younger just because he's super old, but more. Well, the mindset. We're not talking about actual yeah. physical age or biological age or whatever. Yeah, because the robot is timeless. I get it. I get it, Gasbot. I understand <laughs> how time works. Um, Jungle Fury, what was with the puppet? I we all don't remember. <laughs> the puppet in Jungle with, with the monster that we're just talking about? Or. Yeah, I'm not sure. If anybody it's in been, it's been a bit. I'm sorry in advance. If you guys are referencing yeah. something that we clearly don't remember, apologies. Yeah, I yeah. mean, to be fair, Campbell was in Jungle Fury and doesn't remember, so I don't feel like I have to remember. <laughs> but going back to Beast Morphers, um, with those monsters specifically, is there one that really stands out for you story-wise of either creating the voice or just doing the voice outside of Scrozzle? Just because Scrozzle is always number one i feel like for every question i'm going to ask so yeah. let's see who who gets an honorable mention if you will sure well i mean i i'm opening up a huge can of worms here i don't know if we need to do a spoiler alert to the three people in the world that haven't seen beast Pre spoiler yet. alert here yeah, this is the one spoiler and only one beast Morphers. little, little <laughs> hand motion mute if you're watching the playback but by all means please right <clears throat> so um obviously Evox and his big reveal. A um, lot of stories behind that. I, I I don't even know where to begin. I know. I in the pre-interview in the green room, you said something to me. I didn't the end of the story, but you said there was something about a, a, a way to hide that Evox was Vengex. Yes. So maybe you yes. start there. 
Okay, I have been waiting to tell this story for a long time. All right, you're getting you're gonna you're getting a one shot for this. Okay, so um, when uh, when so so I had done um, I had been assisting with the ADR directing in Ninja Steel, mm -hmm. and I was also going to be assisting again uh, with with Beast Morphers. So that meant I was kind of there from from day one, and. Uh, I got the call and they said, you need to be there for, you know, we're, we're bringing in this actor for this character. And of course we found out, oh my gosh, they're bringing back Andrew Lang, who, who played Benjix in RPM. Right. And the, the premise was that his, that, he, that Benjix had, the, the virus had survived and was now in the Beast Morphers universe. And he was masquerading as a, uh, villain called Evos, which is yeah. like this cyber snake. And so um, we brought Andrew in and the uh, first day he came in, we needed to come up with a voice for him for Evox. And you know, I mean the 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 obvious voice for a snake was that voice would be something like this <laughs> everything. But there's pitfalls with that because if it gets too, you know, then you can't the audience can't right. make anything. So we had to kind of work with it and play with it in terms of um, so that it was clear, but it had that kind of snake, snake like quality. Right. And um, so I think we, we came up with a, a voice for it and we were finishing up the session and the issue of his credit in the show came up and it was obvious. We can't credit you as Andrew right. Lang to figure this out. Right. So, so they, he, had he thought of that or had he not even thought of that? You know, it was it was all happening so fast. We weren't thinking that far ahead. But, you know, we were now at a point where it's like, you know, we what do we do with this? Right. So the, the suggestion was, oh, we'll just make a fake name. We'll just come up with something fake. And I was sitting in the back. <laughs> and I and I had a moment and I said, let's. Let's play with this. Since Vengex is a computer virus, let's take Andrew's na name and make an anagram. Nice. Mm -hmm. so, so Andrew went away. Uh, I, my guess is that when he went home, he typed his name into an anagram generator online or something. The next time he came in to record, um, he had a list of names and we all agreed that Randall Ewing was perfect. And it sounds like a real name. <laughs> and it sounds like a real name. And I think there was another name that kind of sounded real, but Randall Ewing was the best one. The others were just, you know, not so obvious. But um, <clears throat> so, that was, yeah, so that's how we came up with the uh, credit for Andrew Lang in order to, right. you know, Fantastic. hide his identity, but also have a little little Easter egg in there that yep. paid homage to Vengex. Right. And if somebody was a really good detective, they maybe could have possibly figured it out. I think a few people did. Yeah, wow. <laughs> but, you know, like nobody was listening to it. It was like, oh, no, no, come on. <laughs> That's, no, awesome. that's a very clever. There's some very clever Power Rangers fans out there. And, you know, I'm just glad that only a few people did not. <laughs> um, let me ask you, because this kind of dovetails into another question I was going to ask you, because there were so many twists and turns and things in Beast Morpher specifically, there was, you know, Dr. K shows up and then, you know, we have the Dino Charge Rangers, but then, oh, we have the crossover with Mighty Morphin and Jason comes back and then it's Vengeance. So like, there's a lot of secrets and a lot of integral to the plot and a lot of little winks and stuff. So now that it's all over, I guess my question is, how much did you know ahead of time? Like what, what, how much did you know? And when did you know it? Like, was it like day one, you knew everything and had to keep your mouth shut for the entire time? Right. Or did you learn it as you went along or like, how, how did that work? Um, as with probably most, uh, film and television, it was, it was all very secretive. Mm -hmm. I think at the very beginning, uh, apart from Chip Lynn and the writers, and I suppose maybe some of the other producers and, the ADR, the ADR director and myself, we were the only ones that knew who Evox really was. And we had to, we obviously, we had to like, just keep it really quiet. And that was one of the reasons why I was so terrified in our first interview 
of doing a live interview because I just thought, oh my gosh, what if I accidentally let right. it slip? So well, that's why I said we got to we got to record this thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so that that's uh, a lot of responsibility though. Like again, not even just the big reveal at the end, but so many other little nods along the way and the little. I, I I'm trying to think if there's been another season that's had this many. Because there's been other seasons with like a big reveal or a big crossover, but I feel like there were so many all along the way that it just. You could have right. spoiled it's, it without even spoiling the big ending. You could have just said something that would like drop a breadcrumb that would get people there. So I totally, right. yeah. So that maybe, was the, go oh, ahead. Right now. I was going to say maybe wild force or in space are the only ones I can think of, but that's just from a fan perspective from kind of the back end. Keep on going. Cause I interrupted. Mm. Sorry. <laughs> so, um, so that was like the one thing that a handful of us knew from the very beginning. Uh, in fact, I don't even think Andrew's agent knew. <laughs> so, um, but as the, I mean, in terms of like other things that were coming, we 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 kind of got drip fed. It's like you know the writers would only yeah. reveal things when they absolutely mm. had to. Gotcha. And then, uh, I tell you what, when I found out that Snide was coming back, <laughs> I did my happy dance. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> Well, well, isn't that the old uh, the old standby joke that like every actor's favorite actor to work with is themselves, basically? So you got to act against yourself, which is the dream. <laughs> well, and this is that that is a perfect segue into something that happened in the last interview. And if, you, if anybody who goes back and watches it, it it's so funny. I was I was kind of uh, petrified. Um, in order to set this up, I have to share something about myself. Uh, I have a real issue with lying. I just can't lie to save my life. Right. So yep. last during the um, interview that you did with me last year, at one point you asked me, have you ever recorded two characters that were in the same scene together? And uh, I, no. I had just recorded <laughs> Night and Spazzle. That's and amazing. I was just like, I was hard. I was like, oh my gosh, I can't lie. But I can't. But <laughs> I, it was just like, how, how am I going to get around this? So, and I think my, I think I think there's like this horrified look on my face, like you know, <laughs> Bugs Bunny, think fast, rabbit. So, <laughs> um, so, I I was I was frantically trying to think of something, and then I remembered in uh, Snide's final scene when he dies at the ex in that same scene, you do hear the mecha voice, you know, happen when they, when they activate their I'm, morphers. Yeah. And I thought that's my out. So I, I told that story. <laughs> well done, sir. Well done. And I love the amount of pressure you're putting on yourself because I think nobody would accuse you of lying. If you have an NDA and you're not supposed to reveal something like, I understand it's, it's hard for you, but had you been like, no, and then later it was revealed that nobody would be like, hey, you liar. Like, you know, but but you found a way. You found that little loophole. It'd be like, I think, yes, technically, yeah. And I and I remember you giving that answer. And I'm like, okay, cool. You know, not really what I was hoping, like, you know, but sure, that's true. And you know, <laughs> now one of the one of the best, or I'm not gonna say best worst things, but like or worst best things, I guess, is you I unfortunately couldn't make the last interview. You guys did it, and then after we had a chat going, and it was just like I really look forward to talking to you guys when Beast Morphers is officially done yeah. airing. And it was like, okay. And then like we we go through watching our our episodes and doing the reviews. And he's like, I obviously can't tell you guys anything. Yeah. I highly yeah. recommend not looking anything up, <laughs> not really perusing yeah. the internet for Power Rangers. Just watch and enjoy it. Let me know what you think. And then saw the review and was like, that's what I've been waiting for. <laughs> I, I tell you, uh, the 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 day before it went to air, and I I, I contacted you, said turn off the internet, just yeah. not go yeah. online until you've seen it, yeah. because I knew that it was that I knew that review you did. Seeing your reaction was so oh, priceless. So yeah, I well, I hate spoilers. Like I, yeah. Big Dog is a normal person who doesn't want spoilers. I'm a person who like I don't want to know what actor might show up. I don't want to know how many episodes level. during the season. I don't want to know my some of my favorite experiences with movie and television. Uh, a perfect example: uh, years ago, there was a movie called Memento. I, I, it always nice. comes to my mind. I was literally walking around with my friends, and my one friend goes, "Hey, you want to see that movie Memento?" And I go, "I never heard of it." He's like, "It's supposed to be good." I'm like, "Okay, let's go." Went in, literally had never seen a trailer, didn't see the poster, and I was like, that was amazing. Now, I think it would have been a good movie anyway, but not having any idea what it's about, it just always makes things better to me, you know? Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Um, we've got a bunch of questions in chat uh, that I, we can't get to all of them, obviously, but, um, well, I'll tell you what. There's a big question 
that <laughs> speaking of all the stuff you couldn't tell us about beast morphers <laughs> let's talk about dino fury <laughs> Now, uh, you look are not- at just the sinking. You're like, yep, yeah, <laughs> let's. Uh- I don't want to put you in a, in a uh. hard spot, but I feel like we have to. We got we got questions. Will we see you in Dino Fury? No, Cummings. A couple people have asked that. I have a graphic here. This is uh, not my image. This was from. Um, <laughs> Oh my gosh! It's from a YouTube channel uh, that I'm forgetting off the top of my head right now. I apologize. This is they did a whole video of their theory of how Scrozzle will return. Other people are thinking maybe you're going to voice a new character. Blah 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 blah. So, understanding that you probably can't say much of, of anything one way or the other. What would you? What can you like? Could or maybe you'll show up on the set for two seconds or maybe you did this or like, is there any little hint of maybe you'll be in it or not? Or, or, or can you just tell us nothing at all? And I know it's a hard question, but I, I have sure. to ask it. Sure. Um, <clears throat> you know, I did, I just think the, the best way to respond to that is that I can't remember if it was our interview or if it was some other interviews I did last year, right. but you know, everyone said, you know, are you going to be doing anything for the next season? And I said, well, I, I don't know. Right. And, you know, the reality is it, it, I, I, you know, I tried to warn people, see, you know, don't get your hopes up. This might be the season I don't do anything. Right. Yeah. You and, don't have any kind of contracts guaranteeing you any work or anything like that. Right. Yeah. Right. So, um, you know, I just, I just don't want people to get their hopes up. And like I said, you know, uh, the, the writers, they, they kind of, reveal things down you know, as things come. So, you know, and, and yeah, just, I just don't get hopes up. I don't, yeah. I don't, just, just the I big truck. That, that's, that's totally reasonable. One um, thing. Well, I, oh, sorry. Go ahead. You first. You first. Well, what I was going to say is um, building on that non-answer you just gave us. Uh, one thing I, I've pointed out to a few people uh, online. Cause everyone's like, Oh, like where, where's Campbell Cooley? It feels so weird to have power of not being, you know, whatever you might not have acted or done a voice in Dino Fury, but you have been involved because I watched the credits and you have a credit. <laughs> so do you want to talk what you can tell us that you have absolutely done and is public knowledge uh, about what you're doing on Dino Fury? Cool. Um, well, uh, I, I'm working as the loop group director. So mm -hmm. looping is all of the, um, it's like a subset of ADR. It's um, ADR, they'll be like recording, re-recording um, main actors and everything. Looping is like all of the background sounds. There'll be like minion monsters, fight sounds, uh, civilians running and screaming, um, whatnot. So uh, I'm working as the loop group director and I've had the pleasure of being able to do it all the way back to Ninja Steel. Um, although I got to say, wow, doing Ninja Steel, that was, that was, that was tough because we also had that additional thing with the, um, um, the, the, the warrior dome. So you had like, it's like a Coliseum. Oh yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. 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 That, yeah. That really wiped us out. So, um, yeah, so I've been directing, uh, the loop group and it's fun. You know, we, we have a good time. It's hard work, but you know, we, uh, we get in there and we get to make all kinds of goofy sounds. And now I don't know if you can answer this or not. And this isn't me trying to, you're the loop group supervisor. That's your title, correct? Correct. And there's a lot of background noises and not character work necessarily, but vocalisms that are done would you as the director sometimes get behind the mic and do some vocalisms in that way? And if so, is that like, could, could, you know what I mean? Like not, Hey, you worked on Dino Fury specifically, but do you in that role sometimes do those voices or, or background noises or whatever? Um, we generally have enough people to, to accommodate everything that we need. Gotcha. And then something that I, I failed to mention in answering that question is that um, I, it's not it's not in the credits but i'm also really i'm technically like the assistant adr director mm -hmm. so basically i have all of the same skills and responsibilities as the primary adr director and if the adr director has to like if they're sick or they have to go away or something i will step in and i will fill that role and i did that um quite a few times during uh ninja steel and beast morphers gotcha. uh, most notably uh, the uh, 
our ADR director had to go overseas for the last part of the second season of East Morphers. Mm -hmm. So I effectively, I didn't just do the loop. I directed the last four or five episodes of Beast Morphers. Those were so, good ones too, with a lot of very yeah. key crucial yeah. things to do. Yeah. And so I, I basically, I directed, uh, the, uh, Steel's death. Nice. Um, uh, I had to, we had to redo some stuff with Dr. K. Mm -hmm. That was great. I loved working with Dr. K. <laughs> um, uh, with some, there were some other things that are critical, but of course the big one. Yep. I, you know it's coming. I directed the big Vengex reveal. That's yeah. Well so done. Good. Sir. So good. good so this also goes back to when people are asking, you know, where, where's Campbell Cooley this season? Even if you don't get to do a voice, your fingerprints are all over. If you think directing the big Evox reveal didn't have an impact on the show, come on. Everybody that works on it has some impact, you know? Yeah. So, but, and I'm not that I don't want to see you do a character, not that I don't want to hear you act, see you act, whatever, but I'm, mm. I'm very aware that as long as you're there in the studio, you're, you're doing something for the show and you're, you're part of it. So that, that I want to make right. sure everyone gets that. Um, Mac and Claire was saying, uh, when you say mini monsters, do you mean, uh, like the foot soldiers, like the henchmen, the putties, that kind of stuff? Yes. Yes. So, um, the, um, Definitely the minion monsters. So I, I, the henchmen. Yes. Uh, and also, like, if there's like other little kind of like one off monsters that aren't necessarily the foot soldiers. Mm -hmm. So, like, maybe a, a, a non vocalized monster, or maybe, maybe it's a monster that only has like two lines of dialogue, then we haven't actually cast anybody to do it. And we can just get somebody in the loop group to do it. Right, right. And that's kind of how I started out when I started. Uh, as a loop actor, uh, I would go in and he, he had no idea what you were going to do. And then, you know, the director would say, okay, we need you to, you're going to be recording this monster here and you see it and you go, okay. Yeah. You, you come up with something and um, yeah. So, it, so there's that, there's the foot soldiers, uh, just any, anything that a main actor isn't voicing. Right. I'll direct. But you did get, Oh, because you were taking, I'm like, how did you do Dr. K? But that's because you were filling in for the year. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. in the case of like, and it, and it was nothing, it was nothing to do with uh, the, the performance. She was spectacular. Right. They, Technical on, stuff on, on the day, you know, they will be like, they will be recording something and like somebody drops something or a, a light blows up or something, or, you know, not that that's ever happened, but right. <laughs> <laughs> you need clean audio, so you've got to redo it and everything. Yeah. Right. And, um, you know, one of our one of the biggest uh, things here this time of year is especially when they're filming outside cicadas. Mm. So if they're filming anything outside, there's a good chance we're going to have to re-record yeah. all that. Dialogue. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Doug keeps asking when the Beast Morphers DVD is coming out. I don't know. Do either of you guys know? Nope. I, we don't know. Check it's Google, on Netflix. Buddy. That, yeah, that's what no, I know. The, the second half of season two is not on Netflix yet. I just—it's almost. I think it. Key, I think it's this month that it's coming out. Uh, yeah, Doug, check Google, buddy. We don't know. Sorry. <laughs> One question I have. Yeah. Going back to Beast Morphers and Ninja Steel. Ninja Steel and Beast Morphers both had very what I would consider big crossovers with previous Rangers, mm -hmm. but the main difference was Ninja Steel. We saw all those Rangers. We saw a lot of Rangers and Beast Morphers, but there's also a lot of Rangers we didn't. Can you kind of explain from the ADR side what it was like to do voices, fight scenes, whatever have you for that multi-episode arc with the previous Dino teams? Uh, I don't think I can give a really interesting answer. I mean, um, I think... Nice like job, big dog. <laughs> <laughs> You perfectly you're perfectly making question. them look bad. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, I mean, like if somebody's wearing a suit or anything, then, you know, the, the, if, if anything, it's easier to direct because there's nothing to match with the mouth. You know, that's, that's like some, some actors are really, really good at just like, you know, recreating a performance and matching everything that they recorded on the day and it all syncs up. But, you know, it's better, it's better if they're just like, in a costume or maybe their, their back is to the, you know, the, so you don't see their mouth. Um, so yeah, it's, I would say, I don't know how to answer this question. I, I guess. Okay. Here, here's a more direct streamlined version of Thank the question. You. Thank you. Not every Ranger that we saw on screen had their original counterpart voice act them. How was oh, that see. directing side of things from both a mm. villain or hero side? Right. Right. Um, 
you know, we, we genuinely tried to bring back as many original voice actors as we could mm -hmm. and it just, it wasn't possible. So, yeah. um, trying to find actors who could, you know, get as close to the original voice was a challenge. Um, I, you know, I can only hope. And I, and look, I, I totally respect that. Yeah. Um, the devotion to this show, you know, everybody just wants it to be flawless and, mm -hmm. I, get, I can promise you everyone is working so hard to make it as flawless as, as possible. And, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes it may not be quite perfect, but, you know, we're certainly we're doing our best. Oh, believe it. Um, there's a request and I, I'm going to put it up just because there's a request, but don't feel the need that you have to do it. Uh, Fox Ranger says, can you please say in your Scrawls voice, voice, it's morphing time, activate beast power. And then there's a couple of people agreeing with that. If you don't want to do it, if you don't oh feel like it, don't feel the pressure. But. I mean, I could try to do it, but Scrozzle's a really hard voice for me to do. It's so much harder than people realize. Hmm. Um, you probably need to flash up. Oh, so it's, it's Scrozzle. It's morphin' time. Act, activate beast power. It's morphin' time. Activate. No promises here. Okay, <laughs> okay. I can't um, believe he's gonna attempt it at all. Just well, we're doing well, this once. No more requests for any voices. And if I if yep. I screw it up. Don't hold me against. Don't no. hold it against me. <clears throat> it's morphin time. Activate beast power. Well done, that sir. To me, sir. You are your harshest critic because that was awesome, and yeah, that, that was I fun. saw the whole the it's whole creative fun. process was just in okay. front of all of us. Well <laughs> done. The ears turning in my head. Yeah, <laughs> that was fantastic. And thank you for indulging. Well, any other requests? I'm not even going to mention them because sure. I don't want to impose. If you want Gazbot to do any voices, by all means. <laughs> if you want Campbell or I, you know what? I'm sorry, not today. <laughs> but yeah, just just to show you, you're right. I'm my own harshest critic. I would scale of one to ten. That was probably about a seven for me. Yeah, town. I'm well, sorry. your seven is someone else's. You know, twenty. <laughs> Eighty-four. All right. Um, hold on a sec. We have, there's, I appreciate all the chat. There's a lot of good chat. Uh, if, if we're not getting to your questions, I apologize. The chat is scrolling pretty quick. One person said, I don't, I lost it now. They said, you're looking off camera and I assume they're talking about me because I am running all the technical stuff. So I'm, I have to look off camera. I don't mean to be rude right. and I'm listening, but if you see me looking away, that's why. Gasbot is getting yeah. things implemented into his head, like in the matrix where he's just <laughs> processing all the information. So he's just like, yep. And here's the image. And Here's a fact. <laughs> uh, speaking of which, I thought this was a good question uh, from LPD Ninja. Are there any go-to voices or any voices you go to when you're developing a character? This is for Big Dog. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Well, you know, the thing is, uh, I'm going to pass this one on to Campbell. He's a little more uh, advanced in this topic than me. So please, by all means, Campbell. <laughs> No, you know, I don't know. I don't really have any. Um, it's usually, like I said, nine times out of 10, the voice just comes to me. Hmm. Now, uh, there, have been a, there have been a few times in the past where maybe I've struggled with um, coming up with a voice. And I mean, and not just for, you know, Power Rangers. I mean, like I, I, I auditioned for other stuff as well. Sure. Um, I think there was a few months back, uh, there was something I was going to audition for. And I was at a loss. I was just like, I have no idea what I'm going to do for this. So I just kind of like, I tried to come up with three or four voices that were just so radically different that, you know, maybe one of them would kind of hit the mark. And mark. Um, I was, I was actually a little, a little embarrassed to do two of them um, because I think one of, one of them was based on uh, the, um, you know, Looney Tunes, um, Sylvester the cat. He has a little son. Yep. Oh yeah. yeah. I forgot about that guy. I based one of the one of the options I did was based on that voice, and then there was another one that. Um, how did I describe it? It was like, I think I, I think I labeled it. It was a cross between Skeletor and Inspector Gadget. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely could like think of Skeletor. I don't remember Inspector Gadget, but not for you to repeat. I just don't. Remember. He was uh, what was the name of the actor? Don Adams, I think. Don Adams, yeah. He was well, the yeah, guy was that was like on the original Get Smart. Get Smart. And then he did eventually, I think he did like the voice, the cartoon voice, but there I think there might have been some other actors. Oh, I thought he was always Inspector Gadget. 
Uh, doesn't, well, know, he, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. <laughs> no, but Big Duck, he was the guy that he would like talk into his shoe and he'd be like, No, I yeah, know I, who Inspector much. Gadget is. I can't think of the right. voice. Listen to what I just said. Missed it by that much. That's the voice. It's not great, but that's See, that what did I tell you all? Gazbot would do impressions and we didn't. <laughs> Thank you. Ninja uh, Steel right. Point for getting you. I, yeah. I will say there are a yeah. ton of questions on They're here. On. I'm also going to be honest. A lot of these questions after I'm reading them are not getting posted. <laughs> really? Give me an example of one that's not getting posted. The most recent one. Oh, I didn't see the most. Oh, my. Uh. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's not getting posted. I, uh, I'm not even. I can't. I've got something. Yeah, I don't even, I even no. see it, so I don't know what. Campbell can't see, but we can see. So every once in a while, Campbell's talking, and it's not something very hilarious. It's because we're reading something such as Gasbot's playing Candy Crush that uh, <laughs> that's uh, being seen by us. Uh, well, here's a question that I will uh, I'll throw up because it'll be an easy one to answer. Uh, Noah Cummings says, "If Hasbro asked you to voice one of the future after both seasons of Dino Fury, will you do it?" And I, I feel like. Yeah, that's a great question. Yeah, yeah, that's, absolutely. I mean, you're an actor. If they offer you an acting job, will you act it? <laughs> yes. Yes, that's what I figured. Uh, here, here's a question from the real Babu. Uh, do you work with voice actors internationally, or do they have to be in your studio? You know, the the technology does exist that we can record people from overseas, and you know, an actor here can record something in the UK, um, but. It, it really just kind of depends on each studio. Mm -hmm. You know, some studios um, haven't really gotten on board with the technology yet. Some people, uh, some some agents, some studios don't necessarily like that because there's something about having somebody in the studio that is m more advantageous. And um, I think, and again, it depends on the studio, but I think you know, there might be like a charge for using the studio, which then you now lose because you don't actually have somebody in the studio. So, yep, yep. um, the, yeah, the technology exists, but, uh, I think we've only recorded a few people or I, it, in my own personal experience in the past with you know, various places. Um, I can only recall recording a few people for, uh, Power Rangers who were not actually in the booth, but they were like in another part of New Zealand. Right. That said, I do remember I did record um, something for a show called the new legends of monkey. And that's uh, they were actually in Australia. Mm. So I went to the studio here and recorded what they needed for the show. Uh, so I, yeah. So it can happen, but it's not the norm, is what I'm hearing. Well, it's it's becoming the norm. It's gotcha. Just, you, know, you know the technology, and it is it's it's not cheap. You know, this right. Yeah. Cheap, cheap technology. So, um, yeah, that's the best I can answer. That that's a good answer, I think. Uh, Big Doug, do you want to uh, do you want to do a question? You want me to do a question? Or you want to keep pulling from chat? No, I got one. Um, okay. In terms of. The voices you've done, Power Rangers or not, is there one character in particular that you remember being the most physical as you recorded just hmm. to really get the proper emotions out for the lines? It's a good one. All right. You redeemed yourself, big dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Cosmo. Cosmo. Nice. I tell you what, um, there's no way I could have done that voice if I hadn't been allowed to do, you know, the, you know, the big gestures and the gigantify, you know, that was, I absolutely adore doing that character. Now the, the only downside to that is that you, you can't move too much. Otherwise the mic picks it up. Oh, uh, so, you know, if you, if you're like moving really hard, you know, it's amazing. Just if that little bit of wind you create with that can get picked up by the mic. Gotcha. That makes so, sense. So I want to, uh, I want to, as, as I want to enter into evidence exhibit a, I'm going to replay the intro that Campbell had done for us. I'm going to play it now. Uh, and this was him doing the voice and you will see him doing the physicality that he's discussing. Yeah. Here we go. This is Cosmo Royale telling you to get ready for Gazbot and the big dog defender action activate. So, and that was just, a normal voice that wasn't even yelling or anything. And he's all yeah. over. And that was also just an excuse to see that again, because I love yeah. that clip. <laughs> well, and, and the performance was quite contained because mm -hmm. I didn't want to like disappear out of the thing. So it was, it was kind of a great. Right, my point is that even that small quiet line 
you're all over the place. So I can only imagine when you're like, yeah, they're attacking. <laughs> um, all right. Well, okay. So we took one of Alex's uh, big dogs there. Let's see. Um, so many questions. I re I love how much you guys are chatting and I love all the questions and I apologize that I keep looking off screen because <laughs> I'm looking to see what you guys are saying. Candy um, Crush, man. It's a great game. Yeah, Candy Crush. <laughs> uh, uh, Matt Kennecler confirms that the second half of Beast Man Morphers is on Netflix. Um, has blah, blah, blah. Ooh, the most recent question I think is a good. We're one. not going to be able to answer that. He's not going to be able to answer that, Doug. We all want to know the answer, but yeah, he's not there's some there's burning questions that I have that oh, I know. There you go, you got it. That uh, that wouldn't be uh, this, this whether is all, we want to or not. Sorry, this is because I'm so far behind. These are all reactions to when you did Scrozzle, by the way. Oh wow! Put my glasses on. Oh wow! It's just like <laughs> ten. It just all gra great. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Uh, everyone, you're awesome. Thank you. I, I don't honestly, I don't deserve this this kind of praise, but oh, I stop, appreciate stop. it. <laughs> oh, quit it! We're, we're, that's what we're here for. We know that. Oh, oh, here we go. Even, oh, I can't. I haven't. I haven't watched Dino. Don't Church worry. Yet. There's no pressure. Just the person who literally birds the voice of this character. In no, no, it's not even. It's not, I can't even remember in my head what he sounds like. So it's not even like I'm going to do a bad version. I literally don't remember what he sounds like right this second. Just gargle some rocks and then talk. <laughs> do, you, uh, do you want me to give you an example? Oh, my God. We're I'm trying really hard question. not to, like, weasel the way into you doing more. I just want to make that clear. I wasn't either. I thought we were both going to not do it. But if you do it, yeah. then yes, I have to do it. <laughs> Yeah, you'll have to do it. All right, I tell you what. All right, so um, this is I'm not a, I'm a terrible improviser, so I'm just going to do some dialogue from an actual episode. And this was the episode where um, Singe, I think he poisoned the city's water supply. Oh okay. yeah, yeah. And he comes back to report to to Snide, and Snide. Oh gosh, this is going to be tough. I have to close my eyes to do this because it's just like I have to All get into good. The, the Snide voice. He goes um. Nice work with the virus, Singe, but now what? Heckle doesn't like you. Heckle likes you, Singe, but I don't. <laughs> Fail me and you'll find out just how much. That's fantastic. That was that so is, good, man. That Jeez. was so amazing. I do not want to follow that, but I promise okay, I will. You have to. No, yeah, I will. I will. He has left. to. I'm making him. Nice you don't have to. I'm making him. Nice. I screwed up the line, so yeah, also, he doesn't have to. I, I also don't remember. No, I'll do it. The people want to watch me fail. It's fine. No, yeah. no, don't, don't, don't. You don't. Do I'm that. doing it. I'm doing it. Okay. But I don't have your line. What I do have is some quake hold. It's a package of quake hold. So I'll read this. <laughs> Good. <clears throat> quake hold, your best defense against earthquakes. Museum buddy, the collector's choice for securing valuable treasures from earthquakes, kids, and other shakers in your home. <laughs> Woo! So, Maybe an I'll, F I'll be the judge. But Campbell won, but Gasbot definitely got second. So good job. <laughs> I wasn't going to do it, but I'm like, oh, here's something stupid I could read. That'll make it feel a little better. <laughs> this is the most voice acting we've ever had on an episode. This is a new action activate record, everyone. It's mm -hmm. true. Yeah. Uh, actually, Dying Fury. Um, I'm going to scroll through these, Big Dog. You got another question or you want me yeah, to? Yeah. Uh, Kokomo 67 at 715. Uh, oh. Had a really good question for Campbell oh, that I uh, I wanted to pop up. Seven seventeen. Uh, hold on. You gotta go back. You skipped it. Oh, this one right here. Yep. Do you remember the first character voice you ever did before you officially got into acting slash voiceovers? This is a good question. Um. <clears throat> and I assume they mean just like goofing around with your friends or whatever. Just something like, distinguishable. I'm yeah, sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I don't really remember doing voices before I got into being a voice actor. Um, now, what I did do before I started doing um, Power Rangers <clears throat> was that I, I contacted a radio station and I said, look, if you, because I know you do like, you record um, ads in house and everything for right. clients and everything. If you use me um, for, you know, to record some of those things, I'll do it for free. And you just give me the finished product at, for my mm. showreel. I said, yeah, Oh, we'll nice. It. That's awesome. And um, there were, I mean, there were a few kind of like, you know, you know, the, you know triumphant voice. And then, <laughs> but I think the one that I quite really enjoyed um, was kind of like a, I don't know, I'm, I'm going to screw this up. It's like those, um, those um, <laughs> news announcers from the 1920s or something, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah. 
why are you talking like this? And you know, like, <laughs> Gazbot does that more often than he should. Uh, no. There is no amount of that that is too much. <laughs> I like to use a cup though. I'd be like, Today we see the big dog coming in and he's got his glasses on, but did you know he trimmed his beard just right? And over to the left we have Campbell Cooley. Campbell Cooley wearing a hat with a little bit of thing on the front. Yes, it's going to be a sunny day in America. Woo! That is always appropriate. Brilliant. Brilliant. <laughs> yeah, I'm more of that classic, just stoic newscaster where you just say things dramatically, even if it's not. The Pumpies may have used the litter box today more at 11. <laughs> You're right. This is the most voice acting we've ever had on any ever, episode, ever, 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 other than me just getting really shrill and frustrated. <laughs> uh, let's see. A lot of people saying they want to see you as a Power Ranger, which we all agree with. Uh, yeah. If I could play it like something like Zeno Wing, I would love it. Here's yeah. what I'll say because all of us, I'm sure, don't have any of this information. So there's not even lying involved. If they were to adapt, is it Corey Uger? Is that the season or Q Ranger? Q Ranger, Q Ranger, which is like the ten space oh, the team Ranger. The Q Ranger, yeah, yeah. If you got to be the Black Ranger, who I happen to have as my favorite, even though I've never seen the season, <laughs> he's like the armor, yeah, big oxy character. That would be yeah. so cool. That's my vote as of right now. I would rather see him as the uh, the purple dragon guy, like the the leader. Once again. I only know what okay. I know. All right. Well, moving on. That no, we, you could spoil it. It's you fine. can't talk worry. about the season that is currently airing, let alone a season that has yet to be decided to be a death. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> if it's so ambiguous, we don't even know. That'd be oh man, that was probably funny if it was something where it's like, you know, um, right after Ninja Steel airs and somebody's just asking you, like, oh, you know, what would you do for this season? Go Busters. It's not like they're going to go back five years. They're just going to go to that next one. And then it's like, um... I'm not going to put them all up. Uh, sorry, I'm not going to put them all up again, but there were even more congratulatory comments for your snide than there were for your Scrozzle. So people wow. definitely enjoyed that. And I screwed up the line, so I'm all the more impressed. <laughs> uh, and then I got second place. <laughs> <laughs> As deemed. Uh, all right, I'm trying to get through. Uh, Big Dog, do you got a question from your own uh, pool there while I go through these? Yeah, to be honest, I mean, I had a bunch of answers in or questions in general, and then in other stories, you kind of answered some of those questions, which thank you very much for uh, doing that. But in terms of just the voices that you did for a specific Power Ranger season, once again, we're going to exclude Beast Morphers. It's not an option. Which not an option? Do you, do you have just kind of the most like fond memories of like epiphany moments of like you saw a monster and you're like, oh well, blah, 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 and you're like, wow, that was great. All right, let's. And you just had like all these characters where it just like fell so naturally for you that you have just such great memories of them. I am so going to disappoint on this answer. <laughs> Stop prefacing with that. There's no disappointment. I mean, I literally, I like, I just, I just go in there, I do the work, and then later, once I've kind of decompressed, it's kind of like, oh yeah, that was that was kind of cool. You know? <laughs> I think uh, that's fair. I think that's a fair answer. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I want for some reason you, you triggered something with that, and I, I, something that I remember. Um, yeah, that, when I was when I was a loop actor for Rangers in the beginning, and I can't remember what it was for. Um, I think I got called up to, you know, just like, we need you to do this monster and there's going to be a fight scene. It's gonna, da, 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 and it just went on for <laughs> and, and of course, I didn't have any time to prepare. I just, you know, boom, just do it. Right. And by the end of this thing, it was like 90 seconds, two minutes later, I was ready to pass out just from the last <laughs> And I, fi I finished recording and everyone in that booth applauded me and i was like yeah i earned that <laughs> so you're not always you're not always modest sometimes you actually uh take the accolades if, if i earn it i yeah you're right yeah sometimes, sometimes. <laughs> now one thing kind of on that positive trajectory do you think that was kind of like a, a pivotal like level up moment for you where you did that and then they're like oh let's you know get some more dialogue over to this guy and kind of slowly you know brought you up in the voice actor ranger realm if you will you know i mean i i it's a per perfectly valid question and i'm inclined to say no but i could be wrong in that point because the 
loop group was it kind of its own separate entity. So the people that were casting for the main monsters wouldn't have been present for that. Gotcha. Okay. They wouldn't have heard the thunderous applause from across the way. Maybe, and, you know, and maybe they did, you know, and, and they're like, knows? oh, those cicadas again. Yes. Um, <laughs> there's, a, there's a question. Iron CNSP man says, would you want to play the main villain for the whole season? But you've done that, haven't you? Um, wouldn't, wouldn't, you were Emperor Malcor, right? I was, I was Admiral Malcor, but he was only in 14 episodes. And then he uh, was kind of, kind of betrayed, you know, and then destroyed. And, and I guess Snide destroyed. also... Snide on sort of the season. super season, and yeah, I'd say the closest thing to like an ongoing villain would be uh Cosmo and Scrozzle. So, well, I guess the question then is, would you ever want to play the main villain for the whole season? Which, again, I feel like is an easy yes, yeah. <laughs> would you want a bigger part in the show? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, we got another one from Real Babu. Let's see here. Uh, as the suit actor, meet voice actor. Real Babu says, when you have when you have had to sync up with a suit actor's visible mouth, do you prefer the actor to over emote or be less emotional vocally? Good question. I think the first part of the question is, have you ever had to sync up with a suit actor's visible mouth? Right. Yep. And then um, you know, if memory serves, like when we were doing um Malcor, mm -hmm. whoever was in that suit there was clearly something wrong with like, I don't know if, if the, the, cause like it was like a, one of those mannequin dogs. Oh, yeah. Very yeah. Dankly. And I don't know if they were controlling it remotely or whether they were actually moving it with their own chin, but the mouth didn't always move and it mm. didn't always in like, they would write a line of dialogue and it was just like the line was not syncing up with the few movements. So, you know, we would have to do our best to try and make it sync up. But it didn't always work. Gotcha. Well, yeah. I, I guess we'll, we'll go into the, a little bit of the hypothetical. The question, if you had to do, like, if it was just literally this part of the face, you could see the mouth. Do you think you would prefer the actor to over emote and be, or just be less emotional? What would be easier to sync to, do you think? You know, it's, I would say probably less would be better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because um, there have been, uh, there's all these little things that, you know, you kind of pick up over time. And, you know, when, um, like when uh, they're on set filming and it's, let's say it's an excitable or an emotional moment or something. And the actor delivers their line really quickly. You know, they say, Oh my gosh, Nate. that almost is impossible to do ADR for later. I mean, we'll do it, but it, it may not necessarily match up. So, you know, as a general rule, even in like really excitable moments on screen, you know, the actors will be told, you know, slow it down a little bit. I know it doesn't right. feel natural, but this, this is, yeah, <laughs> we yeah. will not be able to fix this in post. Um, there's a question that I feel like is a question. Big dog would be like, we're not going to ask that. I but was, that's to... why I laughed at it. Okay. Because uh, it, 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 I'll, I'll translate a little bit. Cause it, at first I thought it was, it says what happened when fart, when you voice acting. So I think they're saying what happened. They just redid it. Yeah. What oh, okay. happens if, so what you happens fart if you you're fart voice acting? You're voice acting? You're in the booth. The mic's hot. Fart. Right. What happens? Well, assuming there's nobody else in the booth with you, mm -hmm. um, you well, you just you just re-record it. But um, <laughs> the, the, the thing that's worrisome is that you know they now have that recorded for all eternity. And I yeah, I was gonna them, say, and, and there's a good chance they're not going to be deleting it. Right. Well, they might need it for a future episode. <clears throat> Maybe your future episode. Somebody gets hit. No, but some monster hits you with a fart ray. We actually, to his credit, we just got stink armor. Right? Stink armor, right. Or, I'll or, give or, you the, or if it's like a comedic duel, like a bulk and skull type thing or Monty. Like they had farts. They had to get the farts from somewhere. So what I'm saying is they should be paying you if they're using your farts. That's all I'm saying. Right. You can tell who's well, more invested in the flatulence here. Just based on our answers well being that i'm a gas bot your human flatulence interests me <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh wow we got a question for big dog big dog snide versus void knight would be so cool both villains are intimidating and voiced by awesome voice actors as well i would love to see that battle i agree so not, yeah so some, not so much a question is like hey big dog right <laughs> yeah and that's another yeah. one i'm gonna move away from because who knows? I don't know what's happening this season, and I can't wait. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
All right. I, I want to do one of my questions. Um, that no, might you're be not allowed to. I'm sorry. All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, it's a, it is a sort of a dino fury question, but I think it's one that you can actually answer. Hopefully. Um, oops, hold on. Let me put it up there. So dino fury. So my question is, is more big picture. Um, cause you've been working on power Rangers for a very long time as an actor, but you've been doing assistant ADR and loop group super. So you've been more in the crew part of it for a while now too. Um, and there's a new, uh, executive producer, showrunner, whatever title you want to use, um, this season, uh, Simon Bennett. And previously I believe it was Chip Lynn for a number of years. Correct. Yes. And so how is it, how do they compare? And I don't mean like, which one did you like better? Who's a nicer guy? Nothing like that, you know, but like, Right. Is there a different vibe, a different flavor they're going for? Creative Can you tell, talk. or is it like, you don't even notice the difference? Like, like from your point of view, obviously like the output, other people might see it, but like. Right. Um, I'll do my best to answer. Uh, I mean, it's, it's always been a very supportive, nurturing, encouraging environment. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the things that Chip always did was he was always, he was always trying to find things that, you know, each of the actors did really well that he could utilize to, you know, kind of bring out in the show. And so, you know, it's, it's all very creative and, um, you know, I think and Simon's amazing. You know, I, there, I really don't notice any difference with the switch over. It just, it just feels right. like business as usual. So, you know, both great producers, I'm really pleased to have been able to work with, you know, uh, both of them. And when I say, some, but Simon, like, you know, because he was directing last season, so I got to work with him last right. season and everything. And, um, yeah, just both very supportive and nurturing producers. So so I, both good, not any real noticeable difference on your end. Well, I, I guess I, that's good because then there isn't, like, a huge disruption to things that are already working okay. Hmm. One question I had last season to this season, obviously the world has been very different since when Beast Morphers was recorded and mm -hmm. Dino Fury was recorded. Were there any major changes from your side that had to be done or was it just, you know, minor things that were tweaked in processes and for the most part business as usual? So <clears throat> are you talking about like in the final uh, post-production for Beast Morphers? Or are you talking like, you mean like, how we've had to adapt in the way the of, adaption i would say right. well i mean uh, just new zealand's been very very fortunate in that you know we're not getting it quite the same way as the rest of the world so you know it, it almost feels like business as usual right nice yeah well that's good for you yeah and that, new zealand. <laughs> honestly that, that's what i was wondering because i know we haven't talked in a while and like you said for us, very different than for the yeah. rest of the world, especially for you guys. So it is cool to to hear that, you know, that glimmer of hope that you guys have had, for the yeah. most part, knock on wood normalcy and uh, just something for everybody to strive yeah. for. And so if, and if all hear. the other TV and television and movie stations can't make things happen, at least we're going to get Power Rangers. Exactly. You know? <laughs> yeah. um, speaking of Power Rangers, well, that's all we've been speaking about, but <laughs> I, I was looking stuff up before the interview, and I've researched it before, and we've talked a bunch, but, like, I'm always finding new little things. And, and this is something obvious, but it, kind of like what I was saying with um, SPD when I watched it, having known your work and, and been more aware of you, where I was like, oh, look at Tomars. Uh, I watched Dino Charge when it was first in the air, and I haven't watched it since. Um, now, you'd think I'm going to talk about Snide or something like that, but I'm not. For those that don't know, Campbell on Di uh, has done face acting, and, and I always call it face acting, but non-voice acting, where he's been in front of the camera, he's been on stage and other shows and things, um, including at least one episode of Power Rangers, Power Rangers Dino Charge. And I would like to share that with you all right oh, no. now. <laughs> there he is. Xandar, huh? Never <laughs> even heard of Xandar. <laughs> My five seconds of fame. <laughs> I saw you. I like and the I beer. Beer. Watch and your then... respect there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Never even heard of Xandar, huh? Boy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that little flyer that I was reading. Yes. Still have it. Nice. What is that? Oh, is that like a fake one they made up for like the Xandar yeah. prince or whatever? Prince of Xandar. Nice. Yeah. Well, awesome. you know, all over the place. So, you sure. know, it's not like, you know. No, just go ahead and yeah. sign it and send it over to me and I'll be happy to. Uh... <laughs> yeah, Gasmall wants to verify that. He yeah, just I'll need to, to check sure it out. that it's. <laughs> so that, that's really cool. To be honest, I'm, uh, I did not catch that. I had, I guess, for lack of a better term, tunnel vision 
in terms of kind of the different roles and characters and things like that. And I totally miss that. So Ninja Steel point for Gaz because uh, I was totally unaware of that until right now. That was great. <laughs> um, uh, do you keep, oh, I'll throw this up. I don't, I don't know if this makes sense to you, but uh, do you keep in contact with Jason Hood, the voice for Vrak from Power Rangers Mega Force? Byron, oh, I know him. Jason. Um, I mean, I haven't seen him for quite a few years. And mm -hmm. the thing is, you know, when we were recording um, um, Mega Force, we wouldn't, we, we wouldn't have worked together because, you know, they bring us in all separately and everything. So at best, maybe we would have crossed paths as, you know, I was finishing and he was coming in. But uh, yeah, I do know him. He's, he's a really nice guy. He's incredibly talented. There you go. Awesome. Um, what's it? Oh, okay. So, oops, sorry. I just put that up. So let me ask you, maybe you've already answered this. Uh, well, you've, you've answered this somewhat, but maybe there's a, more. When you're directing the loop group, do you have any other specific stories or funny anecdotes that you might want to throw out there? Um, you'd kind of hinted about that early, again, in the pre-interview and you have told a few, but I just want to give you an, another opportunity if there was another right. moment that you wanted right. to recall. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, there's, there's, there's probably a few stories that are eluding me right now, but the one that is probably most relevant is, so I'm, I was directing like the final episode of Beast Morphers. And it got time to direct Steele's death. Mm -hmm. And so the actor goes in and it's the scene where like he goes in and he tries to stab Evox with the arrow and it doesn't work. And then Evox zaps him and he's dying and you've got the Power Rangers coming in and he's like reaching out going like, my brother and everything. So there was like, uh, I think when he got hit with whatever Eva, um, Benjik zapped him with, mm -hmm. the... Uh, <laughs> the voice actor let off this horrific scream. Oh, no. I mean, it sounded like something out of a, a horror film. Like he was being, <laughs> I was like, like it, it, it's, it's Power Rangers. <laughs> <laughs> dial it down, dial it down. Yeah, yeah. Dial it down, let's dial it down. And I, and I think my direction was something like, you know, think Luke being zapped by the Emperor in Return of the Jedi. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. And he, meanwhile, he probably thought like, "I'm going to give it my all. I'm going to do the best acting I could ever do." Yeah. And it's like, so, yeah, but that's not the right for this audience. <laughs> well, you know, I would, and, and no criticism. I mean, I would rather yeah. somebody give too much than not enough because yeah. you oh, always yeah. tell them to pull it back. But if you have to drag a performance out of somebody, it's just like. That's my theory on life. Give too much. Just give too much. There you go. And to your previous story, you guys have that recording of that blood curdling screen that can be used a different oh, time. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I don't. Like Lord of the Rings TV show. You got it all Vegas set. Sword blows snap. up and you're just like, ah, too much? Yep, a little too much. All right. <laughs> just try to insert it wherever. You're like, up, oh, still doesn't work. Sorry. All right. Bring it back. Um, question for me, uh, Gasbot, because I was asking about farts before. Would it be possible for you to get Jason Hood on the show? Uh, that is not really a question I can answer. Uh, what I could say is, would I like to have Jason Hood on the show? Certainly. Do I know Jason Hood? Do I have contact with him right now? I do not. Um, I could look into it, but you know, all all the people we have on the show, it's just the people that I'm lucky enough to come in contact with and that are gracious enough to join us. So we're not a big show. I don't have the kind of pull that you. Oh, you want them? We'll get them. So uh, if if you. I'll look into it, but if anybody wants me, wants us to get Jason Hood on the show and has some contact, that, that throw it out there. I'll give it a shot. If people were requesting some SPD interviews. Same thing. I'll do SPD interviews all, all day long, but I don't know any of the people from SPD. You know, so I liked they, it better when you said you will try. Now it's on both of us. Yeah, yeah. Really, well, <laughs> we're supposed to be a team. I mean, we got to at least pretend, you know. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, we have one. Uh, he already pulled it up. Never mind. Yeah, I know. Faster than me. Read the it. real Babu asked, have you ever been in the booth with another actor to do a whole scene? If so, do you prefer that to recording the line separately? I'd rather be by myself. <clears throat> I can um, see that. It's, well, you know, it, it, it kind of depends on the circumstances. I mean, I, I realize that there are some productions where, you know, they'll have two actors in a booth and they play off of each other. And, um, you know, and, and if it works, that's great. <clears throat> um, but I preferred i prefer to just be in the booth by myself and record things so that it's nice and clean and and it makes it easier that because it's really easy 
to preempt somebody else and they're just finishing their line and mm. you start saying your line, that means that they can't, you can't use the line that they've just recorded because they can't. They right. can't. And that's how yeah. people naturally speak. So yeah. Well, now, do you think you notice that more because of the directing and supervising you've done on the other side of the booth? Uh, to some extent, but also I would say though when I was, when I was working as a loop actor mm -hmm. um, for Rangers in the beginning, uh, there was this one guy and it wasn't, it actually wasn't for, no, it actually was for Rangers. Well, it was Rangers and then also for Legend of the Seeker and some other stuff. But there was this one other guy who um, we got so good working together. Like we, they would pull us up for a, a fight scene and it'd be mm -hmm. like, you know, we would, we would trade off like that guy's getting attacked. So he's recording that. And then we, I would take the ball and I would record that guy. And we got so in sync with each other. It was just perfect. Boom, 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 perfect. And we could just do it in one take. Nice. And there's very, I haven't experienced that uh, since. But uh, yeah, it's it's definitely, it's a it's a good skill. I mean, it certainly um, speeds things up if you, you know, if you don't want to record two people separately, but it's, right. it, it, it's fraught with its own dangers. Understandable. Um, Real Babu, by the way, uh, saying Big Dog, you can get all the Operation Overdrive videos. Oh, Real Babu, it's been so long. I missed. I missed this. And, and it'll have to be you too, because I've met Dwayne Cameron a couple times and haven't been able to get an interview with him. So it's it's That's got. He, true. It has to be a true fan. I actually was there fan. for a couple of those. And it's yeah. a very true fan. Yeah, yeah, nice guy, but I just wasn't able to make it happen. He gave us a shout out, so he knew I wasn't the true fan. He knew. <laughs> He, yep, he he was aware that there's a difference of opinion on us in that season. Yep, yep. Um, was uh, he's not gonna be able to answer that, Doug? If Jason David Frank's gonna come back, unfortunately, even if Campbell knew, he couldn't tell. I, however, will answer. No, he's not gonna come back. <laughs> Watch. Oh, I. If you're wrong, please, whoever you know goes back fish that clip out and just repost <laughs> it somewhere just like he's not coming back and then just him I'll entering just like, it's like it's more for time <laughs> i will stake my my reputation as a member of someone on the crew who would have inside knowledge i will stake all of it on the fact that he's not coming back <laughs> um trying to see if James, uh, this is nothing that campbell could comment on but i will just say the whole ranger community has heard this no one knows if it's true or not there's different rumors it's going to do this going to be that my advice is just wait and see because yeah. nobody knows for sure nothing's been announced for sure yeah and just to clarify for those who may not fully understand the question there's been a rumor that dino fury might be the last in suit season but by no means is it the last power rangers project we're getting hasbro right. is very invested in power rangers and we're getting power rangers related stuff we just don't know how when or you know what yeah, there will be power rangers what form it will exactly take we don't know Campbell may or may not know, but cannot talk about it, even if he did. So we're not going to ask him. I'm going to um, be Campbell's verbal security guard for the rest of this interview where I'm just, I'm just going to stand in front of you and just not let you talk just because <laughs> I, I don't like seeing you in, in distraught turmoil. And I'm here. I, I'm here I'll for you, buddy. You, I'll tell you what, though. I'm going to pull up another one of my questions for Campbell to totally change the please, subject. Please do. Uh, like I said, I was doing a little bit of digging and, uh, According to IMDb, my friend, uh, and IMDb uh, is is never wrong, as we know. According to IMDb, <laughs> one of the pieces of trivia about Mr. Campbell Cooley oh, no. is that uh, he, and there isn't a lot. It's not like there's pages and pages of it. But one of the few bits of trivia is that he's really into shipwrecks. And so I'm wondering, uh, what's up with that? <laughs> is that true? If so, what does that mean? It's true. And I'm just excited when it pulls up. Does that, does that, are you having a good time now? I, the... <laughs> you know, I, and it's, it's amazing. Like some of the things that have popped up on IMDb, I'm like, who's writing this stuff? You know, where are they getting this? But um, no, it's, it's actually true. I have, a, I, for some reason, since the age of 10, hmm. I've had a fascination with shipwrecks and I don't know why. I just always have. And, it even um, motivated me uh, some years back to uh, train as a scuba diver. Oh, nice! I, Are you Patty I'm, certified? I'm I'm, I'm Patty certified, and I um, was gonna, you know, I wanted to dive shipwrecks and everything. And then when the time actually came to to dive my first, you know, first wreck, I was terrified. 
you know, like this thing that I've been looking forward to all this time and I was terrified. And um, I, I did it anyway. And after I got over the initial shock of seeing this kind of huge dead thing underwater, you know, it was, just, but it was, it was beautiful. Uh, yeah, it was, it was, it was amazing. I mean, right. so, uh, so what then, is, is the, are you like, is the idea of like, Oh, I might find a treasure or just to see how the sea has like rusted it or the story, like what, what about it appeals to you exactly? You know what I think it is? I think it's the human story behind the people on the ship while it's sinking okay. and the decisions people make. And, you know, why did this person survive and this person not survive? And, you know, what could have been done differently? There's something quite fascinating mm -hmm. about that. What you and take, what you don't. Terrifying. Right. Yeah. So did you like the movie Titanic or did you hate the movie Titanic? Um, you know, I, I can remember even as far back as the age of 10, I, I had a fascination with Titanic. I, I bought the model. I built it and everything. Right. Uh, when they found the boilers in 1980, I was, you know, mesmerized by that. And then when they found out it was, you know, two pieces and, um, um, all those photographs came out and I think it was early eighties in national geographic. Oh, I was just, I remember like opening, opening the magazine and seeing those photos and something that saw me was like, <laughs> horrifying but beautiful at the same time so right. um yeah i think my fascination has more to do with the human story behind it like you know once that thing starts going down what are people's motivations right. what why are they doing this why are they doing that so and then yeah so that's a much more interesting reason than I thought you were going to have. So I thought this was going to be kind of a funny, ha ha, you like shipwrecks. You're like, no, man. Shipwrecks no, it's, it's, that. Man. Like, yeah, you know what? You're right. No, no, that is really cool. <laughs> I think like because the concept of it is so reactionary, they're, like what do you do when you find out the ship's going down? It's like you said, the not knowing how people are going to react and kind of all the ripple effects, if you will, down the line is really cool. So that's awesome. Yeah. Thanks. Agreed. Um, we got a question from Brian Weaver. Question for the goat himself, Campbell Cooley. <laughs> uh, I think you may have answered this, but because he called you the goat, I'm going to let him have it. Which okay. who was which villain was harder to voice, uh, Malcor or Snide? Ooh, that's that's a good question. Um, strangely, probably Malcor. Oh, whereas Snide. Snide was difficult in the sense that it's very, it's very aggressive. It's very abrasive on my Taxing. throat. Mm -hmm. Whereas with Malcor, man, there was something about Malcor trying to, you know what it was. I think like when I got the part, there was something quite regal about him. Right. And I wanted to maintain that kind of keenly regal status and and i think that was the thing that kind of made it hard to to get through mm. and then uh funny little story so on average you know i mean I, actually i can't even say on average but usually i can depending on how difficult a voice is i can usually record maybe 20 30 lines per session and that but that's you know that's you know, I'm usually shattered after that. And that's multiple years. reads for each line, I'm assuming. Exactly. Multiple reads. Thanks, Big Dog. I was asking Campbell, but yeah. <laughs> I know you're guarding him and protecting him against questions. but this I is am really here <laughs> to protect him from the elements. <laughs> so, um, but on, on average, I think um, with Malcor, maybe I had, you know, anywhere from 10 to 15 cues per session, maybe sometimes a little bit more. And if it was kind of leaning into the 20 to 30 range, you know, it was really starting to wear on me. So, um, and I would, like I said, I would usually need like a day or two to recover after that. And you just drink lots of, you know, warm water with lemon and whatever. Right. So we got to the, we got up to the last episode and the ADR director emailed me or I emailed or call or something. I don't remember. He emailed me. He said, look, um, I just got your script for Malcor's final episode. I got to warn you, this is going to be tough. You got a lot of dialogue. And I was like, what? You know, 35, <laughs> lines, <laughs> 30, 35 lines or something. You know what? I get the script. It was like <laughs> 90 cues. Oh. And I had to have it all recorded in three hours. Oh, have you ever sprinted a marathon before? <laughs> Would you like to? Yeah, that yeah. day I did. That day I did. And literally, 
I finished at exactly three hours and I didn't talk for two days. Oh my wow. God. And what, what would they have done if your voice had cut out before it finished? Like what happened? happened? They would have had to have brought me back a few days later, but you know, it just, but the schedule would be all messed Oof. up. Yeah. That's crazy. Um, well, we're, we've been going about an hour and 20 minutes, so I don't want to keep it going. Wow. too long. Yeah. Time is flying. We're having too much fun here. Oh, maybe it'll be 20 minutes. Gazbot. I never before. said maybe it'll be 20 minutes. I said, it'll he be said, Camel will back me up. He's like, eh, maybe 30 minutes. Ah, you're there. What are you going to do? Hey, I'm from Jersey. I'm start recording before we go live so that I can have two tickets to your lives. See, it's not so fun when it's flipped on you, is it? <laughs> I don't care. Um, <laughs> uh, Real Babu giving us more trivia about. Um, Axelrod, the actor who did Lord Zed, he's, he's also a scuba diver. And he said he skipped the 100th episode party to go night diving because it was a full moon. That's pretty cool. That's pretty awesome. I mean, I like parties. I like Power Rangers. But yeah, I mean, full moon night diving. Like, yeah, why not? Um, that's a really random question. Um, oh, <laughs> do not break my record for the longest episode. You know, I don't remember what the record is. We might be pushing towards it. I don't know. I don't know. Let's break it. Let's break it, baby. Come on. <laughs> um, Filibuster. All right. Uh, Big Dog, did you run through all your prepped questions? I have some I more. did. I, I'm well past mine, and and That's we fine. even did some on the fly that went. We've got so many good ones from the chat, too. Yeah, um, honestly. I haven't even gotten to all of mine, but I, I always have more than I think I'm going to need. Uh, well, okay. I'll ask something uh, that apply, it's more to – less about Power Rangers, more to uh, voice acting and specifically about being an ADR director or assist director and a loop group supervisor and all that stuff. There's a lot of aspiring amateur voice actors. And I'm not just speaking about myself and big dog here, but like people that ask us sometimes, which is weird because we're not even voice actors, but like just, this comes up a lot, especially when we have an interview with someone like you um, for not, how do you get into the business or how do you get an agent? Nothing like that, but more practical advice um, I was thinking is what is if you know, what is the best way to cheaply record yourself for an audition or to do a web series? Like, like if you're just, Hey, I don't have a studio. I'm just living at home and I got a couple bucks and I want to try to make a voice and do a little cartoon, or I want to make a voice and send it to a studio. What would be your advice? Is there a certain setup, sure. a certain microphone, a certain program, something that you would recommend for people that are interested, but don't have, you know, it's not their career. They don't have a huge budget, but they kind of want to dip their toe in. What would be right. your suggestion? No, good question. Um, <laughs> excuse me. So, um, you know, there's, there's all kinds of wonderful free programs out there for recording. You've got Audacity, you've got other programs and everything. And if you do have to pay like a few extra bucks for a few of the add-ons, it's worth it. Right. Uh, so you've got, you know, so, and then there's, there's some, um, there's some really good mics out there. You can get pretty cheaply mm -hmm. for me. I would say the most important thing is make sure that wherever you're recording, you're not going to pick up anything else and you're not going to pick up any reverb from yourself. So if you um, go into like, let's, let's say you have a, a laundry room or something and it's fairly, you know, cut off from everything, you know, you're going to maybe get some, go out and purchase some um, uh, moving blankets. You know, there's some of the moving blankets. That oh they put yeah. In yeah. Okay. Kind of, and yeah. put it up on the walls and everything. And if you can, you know, just, maybe a few layers because you, you want that clean audio. You don't want things, you don't want your voice bouncing off the wall and coming back into the mic because it, it really, it impacts it. So you almost like when you'll know you're doing a good job when you record yourself and you hear it back and there's just like, it's almost empty. There's just nothing, right. just the voice, nothing else. So I would say, you know, there, there are great free programs out there. Uh, there's some really good inexpensive mics out there. Uh, don't ask me to name any off the top of my head, but the main thing is find a space that's not going to get any noise you know, like from the neighbors next door or the dog barking or whatever. Right. And you know, if that happens, then you just, you pause, you wait for them to pass and then you, you keep going for it again. You know, I've got like um, some, I've got a few mics that I use and even well, like the cheapest mic that I have, which is a pretty good one. Uh, it, it'll pick up a plane like five miles overhead. <laughs> so, you know, I just have to like put all kinds of blankets and stuff just to make sure that nothing gets picked up or I just have to wait plane. <laughs> one, one follow up to kind of what he was saying. I know you 
suggested the blankets on the walls. What would you do in a room with a um, a window? Would it still oh. be the same method, or is there something else you would recommend for that? Yeah, I would really recommend doing it where there isn't a window. But if it if there is a window, try and like fill it up. So like I have a um, I I measured out a window in part of our house. And I built a frame and then I stapled like lots of um, towels to it. Oh, nice. Okay. And then um, outside the window, you know, you can just put another layer out there, maybe like a, a sheet of wood or something, but you know, you just, yeah. So just layers. Right. Layers. Right. Just deaden everything. Just because, oh, sorry. To what you were saying, I was thinking like in my house, every room has a window. So that's why I was like, <laughs> if well, I want to go down, down this closet. path. <laughs> Do you have a basement? We live uh, in California. Yeah, basements are almost non-existent yeah. here, which was a weird thing I mostly discovered from Gasbot. Yeah, because I'm from New Jersey and the East Coast, and everybody had a basement. And I moved out here, and I'm like, we're looking at all these places. Nobody has a basement. And it's like, yeah, earthquakes. I'm like, oh. <laughs> Give me something in the center of your house, like a utility closet or a, or, or, or a, a bathroom. All my bathrooms have windows. All um, right, big dog. Well, you can't. I know. I'm the worst case. I, I'm sorry. That's why I was asking of like, hey, if somebody has like the yeah. absolute. Yeah. Well, he did give you the answer. You staple a million towels to it and then put up the blanket and just you got to do more work than the average dog. It's true. No, I appreciate it just because as Gasbot said, we've loosely done voices once or twice. And for me, it, just that little extra edge uh, is helpful. So thank you. Yes. Oh, you're very welcome. Um, all right, so let's let's do one more question and then and then wrap it up because we yeah, we're almost at an hour and a half here. Uh, let me see if there's Phil anything. Buster. Phil uh, Buster. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have one in chat, but I don't think it's a good one to end on. Um, well, I'll tell you what, Campbell. Do you instead of asking a question, do you want to share something? Do you have something that you wanted to talk about, or or something you wanted to say that didn't get brought up, or a question that you saw on the list that you wished I had asked, or something? I mean, there's you know we we've covered so much. I mean, I, I just. Can't think of anything. I okay. mean, well, moment I say goodbye, it'll come to me. <laughs> yeah. Well, I and I have a bunch too, but I, I, I the, here's the problem with me is I, I'm like, oh, I should have saved some of my better questions because I was like, oh, let me ask this one. I'm like, that's dumb, and like, you know, like, ah, who cares about that? Well, let's see. There's some more chat just came in. Let's see. Uh, 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 Listing their top ten seasons. Nice. Kendall Claire. I was talking about. Yeah. These aren't questions, but comments. But um, let me see. Okay. I'm going to, okay, I will end with this. It's not going to be a question you could give a really good answer to, but it's another one of those <laughs> questions that everybody's going to want us to ask you. Sweet, and, perfect. Um, so do you have any that you feel comfortable sharing? Do you have any theories or hopes for Power Rangers after Dino Fury? So don't, we're not talking about Dino Fury at all. Stuff that hasn't happened yet. Whether it's, you know, the animated series, a more adult oriented Netflix show, movies, more toy ad ad adaptations like we've seen before. Is there anything after Dino Fury that you think we might see or would like to see or, you know, just like more of the same or a season you want adapted or just, you know, what, what would be your thing that you'd like to see or that you think we might see after Dino Fury? I guess well, is what I'm asking. Good question. I, I just honestly don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, I tell you one thing that I would like to see uh, at, in the, at the risk of sounding very self-serving. <laughs> I want answers to Scrozzle. I we want to that story. I want to know what he was doing in that year after yeah. Vendrix was defeated. Why was I, he in Corinth? That deserves to be its own self-contained graphic novel from boom studios and yep. then the character needs to come back in dino fury or another season and you voice him and like so we need the full backstory in a comic and then a couple episodes to like actually follow up in, in that canon as well i agree yep. uh so that's a great answer i think that is a good one to end on actually <laughs> there's passion um uh big dog you're being asked for your top 10 seasons but i don't think we're going to do that now maybe that yeah, not be now difficult. that's thank you uh yeah. brian weaver that's something for future either hiatus shows or the end of one of the shows gasbot and i can sit down and kind of do a compare and contrast like we yeah that could be that. a whole a whole episode just ourselves and we don't want to keep campbell here for more and uh, more than an hour and a half you've been so generous with your time sir oh, thank, thank you. you so much for joining us uh it's yes, always a pleasure you. we love you we love your work and you know hey if you get to do some voices on dino fury that's amazing if not you're still contributing regardless so 
Uh, is there anywhere um, you'd like people to follow you or anything, any upcoming projects you want them to keep an eye out for or social media, anything like that you want to throw out? Just, just lay it on us. Sure. Uh, nothing, no work on the horizon. Um, I, uh, you can find me on Twitter at Campbell Cooley, uh, at, at Campbell Cooley and, uh, Instagram at real Campbell Cooley. There you go. So it's Campbell Cooley or at, what, what he just said. I don't know why <laughs> you said it. I'm like, I'm going to say it again. But <laughs> yeah. Let me repeat it wrong. <laughs> uh, oh, excuse me. I have an alarm going off for some reason. All right. Well, for, for that being said, I guess, uh, let me just check chat one more time. Okay. I think we hit candled as much as we could on chat. Chat has been really good today. Thank yes, you so much for everyone that watched it live. A lot of good comments, a lot of good chat, a lot of good questions. If you're watching it after the fact, it'll be recorded. I, I wish you could have been here live, but I'm glad you're watching the recording too. Feel free to throw stuff in the comments. If you have questions for Campbell, maybe we'll have them on again. So throw them in and you know, maybe next time we can pull it up that way. Uh, but until then, I have been Gasbot. I am the big dog defender, and he still is. Campbell Cooley. And? And? To the power. power. And credits. There's a little microphone mute by your picture if you want to unmute it. Oh, no, he left. He's gone. <laughs> you to, if, if you want to talk over the credits, you can, but you have to unmute your mic yourself. Oh, actually, I can do it. There you go. Nope, we just, we're fighting each other. Oh, my gosh. Lock, unlock. Unmute. You guys can't see this fight, and neither can I. What is happening? I can't unmute his mic. He can't unmute his mic. I don't know what's happening. Well, this is a true episode ending this way. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to end.